Hello and welcome to Bay Area Independent Filmmakers. Today on my show are the amazing guys from Coffee and Ketchup who are helping to create collaboration opportunities and educational resources for actors, filmmakers, and other industry professionals in the Bay Area. Please welcome Cameron Mark Lewis and Taylor Lambert. Hey, thank you, Connie. So good Thanks to be here. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, my pleasure. Yeah, it's great to be here. Good. Yeah. And um, so just tell me, where did you guys grow up and, and what got you into this industry? Well, I guess I can start. Yeah. <clears throat> I, uh, I grew up in Washington, D.C. And, you know, I really got into theater acting, which that was my, that was my beginning. It was actually a funny story. I was in college and I was taking this. Uh, statistics for psychology class and I was getting increasingly depressed the more it went on and simultaneously I auditioned for this play and I got booked and I got cast and then you know once I started acting and realizing I could make a whole crowd full of people laugh I was like this is it this is great I I want to do entertainment um, I want to bring people together so that was kind of my beginnings and then moving out to California um, about four years back mm -hmm. and just doing a lot of commercial acting, uh, independent film acting, and here we are today, uh, four years later, and with coffee and ketchup, so. Very cool. Yeah. And what about you, Cameron? So for the record, most people call me Taylor at our, oh, okay. our meetup, so <laughs> I am Cameron. Oh, do they get you guys mixed up? We get mixed up <laughs> But that being said, um, so I'm originally <laughs> from Reno, Nevada, mm -hmm. and I grew, I was born and raised there, lived there for 25 years, and I can remember from the age of like six or seven, just having a one of those old camcorders and hanging out with my friends and going out in the backyard and making movies and really like trying to use my imagination a lot to visualize different scenes and make things happen. I would like watch watch stuff from Steven Spielberg and I would always watch behind the scenes of uh, DVDs whenever I got them, so I could kind of research mm -hmm. about how they they did the things mm -hmm. and uh, different techniques they applied. And so um, I lived out there until I was 25 and got into modeling. And then I was just feeling the, the urge to kind of try something new and get out there. And so I moved up to San Francisco and uh, started acting and getting into everything production related. And so fast forward, that was a little almost three years now. So, oh. mm -hmm. so both of you have been in, in California for like about four to three years. Just mm -hmm. doing pretty fresh. Yeah. I mean, long enough to feel like it's home, though. Yeah, people say where are you from. I, you know, I say Walnut Creek now, not Washington D.C., just because I've been there for so long. Mm -hmm. um, but then over the course of the of the years here, we met each other. Um, yeah, so I was going to say, how did you guys yeah, meet each we, other? Yeah, I think we did a, a casting at Nancy Hayes. Well, no, the first thing was. Oh no, I'm sorry. Yeah, the protest. We got paid to protest. We were paid, paid protesters. protesters. We were yeah, hired protesters. Yeah, for, for Chevron. Chevron. Right? It was yeah. the uh, anti-Chevron protest. We got hired by some company from Ecuador uh, who wanted to raise awareness about the oil spillage yeah. in the Amazon rainforest. And right. So they hired Taylor and I and a and, couple of. And our quick friends. shout out to Chris Pieri. You were there too. A few others. Yeah. But it was a good time. And we met there. But then after that, we didn't really. I mean, we were cordial, but we didn't really keep in touch. Mm -hmm. And so I think eight to. 12 months after that. Yeah, we, we saw each other in an audition. And, and we were like, let's get some coffee and, together and, and, and yeah. catch up together. Catch up. <laughs> the beginnings. Of the, the, the origins of coffee and ketchup, yes. And, uh, and then it still wasn't until another six or eight months that we were like, okay, let's do something together. So it's a funny story. I called him. I was trying to, I was trying to sell my friends on this like, amazing actor's class. I was like, you got to do, do it. It's 30 bucks, but you'll love it. Like, you got to do it. Mm -hmm. And Cameron's like, well, I'm not going to go to the class, but... I'll have coffee with you, and you know we can talk about, you know, other ideas you have. And I said that's great. And so, and so, where do we meet the Ferry Building? Uh, Blue Bottle Coffee at the Ferry Building. Oh yeah, yeah. Had coffee. Started talking about the industry and talking about kind of the things that, you know, it'd been about. I don't know. We've been doing coffee and catch a little over a year. A little so over a year now. Yeah. Started right around that time, and we, you know, I'd been out here for about a year and a half, and so I was starting to get used to the whole world of entertainment, acting, and all these different things, and so. Um, we just talked about what we loved about San Francisco and mm -hmm. how most people envision going to Los Angeles to mm -hmm. go and get a career going for acting or filmmaking. And I was falling in love with the Bay Area and I felt like there didn't have to be that disconnect. Why can't we do stuff here? Because, you know, I know Taylor, he's an awesome actor. I know a lot of other awesome actors, meet people on auditions, and it seems to be a pretty cool community. Yeah. But something was missing and it's just that connection to having sort of a home base in mm -hmm. a sense. 
yeah, I believe that you can you can make it anywhere in the world, you know, as long as you create that environment that yeah for mm -hmm. the area. So and that's you, what you yeah, you're doing. So what is coffee catch up all about, and how did you guys come up with the idea? So yeah, so we met yeah at the ferry building, as Cameron said, and it just started with us. You know, we were coffee, we're having coffee, and we're catching up with each other. It's the whole thing, and it's this funny thing of coffee and the food catch up, which we did our whole promo video on, which you'll see later, which is also kind of a funny little play on words there. But no, it's just the idea that um, <clears throat> I really think the origins for me, at least, of coffee and ketchup was the fact that when you go to a casting call and you're waiting in an audition room, besides the fact that you're nervous and you're going in for the audition, there's also the fact that all your other peers are right around you. And the fact that it's the only time you get to see them is just during the audition seemed kind of off to me and it seemed like you're getting kind of gypped you know like there should be context for you to spend time with your other peers in a place that's not so stressful and you know where the energy is really intense and you're focused on your lines and you know you're not your highest self and so for me it was like well what if you know that feeling after an audition when you do really well and you walk out of the audition room and you're giving everyone a high five that's what i do um break a leg you know because they generally want them to break legs. I mean, I want, I mean, you know, I want them to do well. <laughs> I want them to break their legs so I can get the part. Um, but have a place where we can meet and and talk, even talk about that audition. Like, how did it go? Like, it was really bad. I didn't know what to do. Because for me, there is not a place to really have conversation about acting in the industry outside of that cramped audition room. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I would say, yeah. to bounce off that, we were inspired by a fellow Bay Area group called Balance Breakfast, which is uh, catered to musicians. And so they had been uh, having meetups in a weekly capacity um, for about six months. And uh, yeah. I'm in a band, and he's in, uh, my bandmate. He's an actor. Our lead singer, his name's Andy Strong. Andy. Um, and he told me about that. And I felt like we could do something similar for the entertainment mm -hmm. scene. And so um, Taylor and I just decided to... Let's, you know, let's pick a day, which is the hardest okay. thing to get started. Is pick a day, pick a time. What's going to work for people? We have no idea. You know, everyone has different schedules. So it's really right. just whatever's going to work for us, I guess we can go. And then we'll just start inviting our friends to, you know, come and talk I about mean, the industry. Yeah. We found that, like, no time's a good time. You know, every time is wrong. If it's in the morning, it's, it's too early. If it's at night, there's other plans with, you know, the spouses. If it's weekends, they're up in Napa. If it's weekdays, they're at their day job. No time is right. So we're just like, you know what? We're going to do it at 8 a.m., Every it shifted a lot in this past year. It's been on Wednesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays. Time fluctuating between 8 a.m. and 11, 11 a.m. But I think we found that you know, sort of doors opening at 8 o'clock, people come in, they have coffee, they have hot breakfast. Mm -hmm. It sort of at least allows them to wake up a little bit before 9 a.m., which is when you know our special guest or or the topic of conversation would start, and then so they could kind of go into it that way. Yeah, most so. auditions in the city are like 10 o'clock. Well, and, that, and I think so that was... good to go before right. your audition and yeah. talk and chat. And exactly. And exactly. And we're yeah. also kind of taking the approach that we're, you know, we're doing this for people who are attempting to make a career out of, the, out of that profession. Mm -hmm. People who don't necessarily have day jobs. People who don't, you know, have these things that hold them back in a sense from going full force into the acting world, into the production world, because... <laughs> As me and Taylor know, having these other side gigs, it takes away time from what you really want to be doing. And so, yeah. um, you know, we have a lot of people who come. They try, well, some people wake up at four thirty in the We've morning. We've got one couple that comes yeah. from Tracy wow. every morning. I think it's a two two and a half hour commute. So I think they get up at three. And I remember one time she told me, you know, we left fifteen minutes late, and we got there after the guest speaker oh, because no. the traffic builds up so bad yeah. on the Bay Bridge. But yeah, and that's another thing, you know, having the meetups early in the morning really can kind of weed out people who don't really want to be in there, don't want to be in the acting scene versus people who really are committed to it, you know. And so getting up early, showing up, um, engaging in discussion, those are all very key elements, I think, to becoming a really professional actor and someone who's really serious about their career, you know. And it also gets your day started on such a positive note. You're yeah. surrounded with all these people, there's great coffee. Good conversation, good vibes. That is, if you're a people person. If you're an introvert, it's probably going to be a nightmare. But, yeah. <laughs> but it's still, I'd say it's still welcoming for everybody. You know? Yeah. So this is a friendly environment, and Taylor is pretty electric. 
Yeah. I don't know yes. how he has so much can, energy at eight o'clock in the morning. <laughs> I'm still usually just trying to put myself together. I barely get, you know, get out of the shower and get there on time. That's Taylor's the coffee's just, first thing come in. It's just him smiling, being, "Hey, what's going on?" Yeah, just, probably doing push-ups somewhere. And yeah. Check with Andy on my back. Andy Strong. Um, yeah. Well, so God, I mean, you guys do other. You guys are starting to do other things too, like mixers. Mm -hmm. So if people can't go in the morning, you know, right. they can come to the mixtures at night. And yeah, it's yeah. kind of a, it's a figuring out kind of a response to what people, you know, in our community want to see and things. And so, I mean, we really just started going and doing it, you know, on a weekly basis, which I think consistency is the number one key to building anything, just doing it and doing it and doing it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, so yeah, we wanted I mean, to, exp you know, we we had our one year anniversary party in July, and we, so we had a big event at Piano Fight, which is where we um, hold all of our meetups now, and we had 350 people come out. Um, yeah, I remember it was that really crazy. <laughs> it was a big yeah. turnout, yeah. And so I think we're gonna try to uh, do some more things like that. But there's also other groups that are out there, like Barry, a film mixer. Mm -hmm. um, they've started doing a weekly, or not a weekly, a monthly uh, mm -hmm. industry night get together, and then mm -hmm. they also do a larger mixer at Piano Fight. Yeah. Um, and so they're they're starting to get some consistent, um, you know, evening uh, yeah, good mixers and things, which is yeah. awesome to see. Yeah. More and more of the community is you know growing together and doing yeah. things together. And it's so nice that just a quick note on Piano Fight, just the fact that they exist and they have this beautiful facility we can use, has been such mm -hmm. a godsend. You know, because I mean they have two beautiful theaters, they have this restaurant, bar, cabaret stage, mm -hmm. very inviting atmosphere, and. Um, it creates a great platform for the musicians, the actors, creatives, all types in the uh, in the creative realm in San Francisco to come. And it's sort of like you know, if you build it, they will come, kind of thing. And yeah. it's true; they've built it, and it's taken years. And just a shout out to Piano Fight for being awesome and hosting us every week. Yeah, so. they're really amazing. Yeah, yeah it's a it's a great venue. Yeah, it's a great venue. I mean, and yeah, you can, you can put a lot of people in there too, which is awesome. Mm -hmm. Surprisingly, it's like yeah. <laughs> you surprise how many people. Can play oh yeah, we, yeah, but 350 I think was the max. Yeah. <laughs> right. Any more than that? <laughs> our uh, our next big uh, our mixer is coming up December 1st. December 1st. Like so Christmas for folks party. out there, Christmas party December 1st. Mm -hmm. It's already in the in the works. We have some exciting surprises coming, and um, yeah, we're yeah, it, these parties are. I mean, you know, because people come to the morning meetups, but the ones that can't make it, mm -hmm. it kind of generates this energy where it's like, well, if I keep missing these morning meetups, I've missed fifty two morning meetups. I gotta go to the party. So I think that's why when tickets go on sale, they go really quick because people just they want to see what's going on in the Bay Area. Yeah. They want to see the scene here, and they want to see yeah, it growing to each other, and just kind of growing together, yeah. providing support for one another is really the biggest thing out here in an, in a, a scene that's you know growing. But it's definitely not the size of Los Angeles or New York City or different countries or different, different states, states in the in South. south. Like, certainly like, countries, yeah. Yeah, certainly <laughs> countries, uh, other countries as well. But yeah. you know, San Francisco has the potential, I think, to be a very good scene, especially mm -hmm. in the indie, indie market. I agree. Yeah. There's there's so many untapped. Um, you know, talents here, on top of tons of talent here, that mm -hmm. yeah. they just need that that motivation, that drive, and and what you guys are doing is you're bringing that light to them, and I think it's wonderful. I think it's really great. We like to hold the philosophy that you know we're all in it together. Yeah. Um, Cameron and I can only do so much, you know, but the fact that we're trying to create a space where people can come and collaborate, kind of, it, it creates a circuit and it re-enlivens us. And so we go back and we do more work, and then we have another event, and twice as many people show up. We go back to the office, we get really excited, and it keeps growing. It's like this ping pong, it's mm -hmm. bigger and bigger and bigger. And so it's this just, again, just, uh, I don't know. I've never lived in a city like San Francisco where it really promotes collaboration, and people just want to get together. They want to work. So many artists out here, so many beautiful views for filmmaking. I mean, it's just the place to be right now. And it, uh, yeah. The potential is amazing. I, I just besides the rent prices. <laughs> besides, yeah. Oh my gosh! Yeah, please oh talk about that. Yeah. Uh, Let's not steer so shoot. <laughs> so you shoot in the East Bay or something? Right. <laughs> Live in the East Bay. Now you guys actually just <clears throat> made a short film with Coffee and Ketchup Entertainment mm -hmm. Industry. You did. Um, yes. Now you guys. <clears throat> what What is this short film? It's Good Cop, Good Cop, right? Mm -hmm. What is What is it all about? So we did a uh, while back. We did a call for submissions, mm -hmm. and we wanted to see what uh, the people in our community, you know, could come up with. And so um, we had uh, simple rules, which was three pages or less, 
uh, three characters or less, one location, and something that was producible because we don't, you know, have that many resources available to us right now, and mm -hmm. money is always an issue for every filmmaker, I'm sure. Yes. Um, and so we have a bunch of submissions, and uh, our friend David Levine, he uh, is a theater actor and just has his own comedy troupe, really bright guy, really funny. And he uh, submitted Good Cop, Good Cop, which was a play that he wrote for the theater. And uh, Taylor and I had seen it performed a couple times at Piano Fight, and it was really good. And so we thought it would be a, a good... Uh, yeah, a good option. A, a, I mean, good, it was... a good option. And so... Yeah. Yeah. And, um, yeah. and so, yeah, and so the next few months we, we adopted that. We kind of went over it with him. We adapted it to the screen. Mm -hmm. and, <clears throat> and then we got all these people involved who just wanted to collaborate. We just said, who would like to be involved in the project? And all these people raised their hand. And so we said, great, like, we can do this. And then Cameron yeah. found an amazing location on Treasure Island. Um, you know, we got some food for everybody, and, and, that, and that was it in terms of production cost. And then we just shot, and shot it on a Red Dragon, I believe. Um, beautiful yeah. camera. Great. See, yeah. yeah. But in the, in the acting, it was phenomenal, too. I mean, mm -hmm. It's just because they rehearsed it a bunch, and they were very committed. And but props to Andy Strong, who directed the, the short film. He had never directed a theatrical piece before. He, he directs uh, some theater performances and plays and different things, but it was his first time going to the film. And uh, I called up my friend Kwong Lee, who had just finished directing his first feature in Los Angeles, uh, Buddy Solitaire. And I was like, hey, Kwong, you know, it'd be awesome if you could come and help on this project. Mm -hmm. And I've got Andy, uh, who's directing for the first time. Can you be his assistant director and consulting director? And he's like, yeah. And so we had a really good team of just core collaborators and oh, yeah. people who really were into uh, working together. And so it was a really smooth team. We shot the whole day. And I'm really happy with what came as a result. And I'm so happy. Yeah. yeah. And then we yeah. premiered it. <clears throat> Our last premiere was that I went to is Bay Area Film Mixer yeah. and Packed House. And I mean, it was great that the audience picked up all the subtleties because it's, 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 it's got some kind of dry humor to it. So <laughs> when it was a Packed House and everybody was laughing at every joke, we're like, yes, <laughs> nailed this, we did it right. <laughs> so yeah. And I believe you guys brought in a, a clip of it. Is that correct? Yes. We did, yeah. Well, let's see. Should that. we show the clip? Yeah, okay. let's see the clip. I'm just gonna lay it all out there for you, kid. We have you at the scene of the crime on video. Your fingerprints are everywhere, and the eyewitnesses are nuns. Lots of them. <laughs> nuns. The best thing you can do here is let me help you. That's all I wanna do. I just wanna help. Let's hear your story. Comes too tight. What? Huh? Let me loosen those for you. Fuck off me. Watch, me! Get off of me! Huh? Yeah. Fuck you. Huh? All right, look, I don't know what kind of fucking games you're trying to play, but I'm not talking. <laughs> right you are. This is good. We're just chatting here. Couple of chatty Kathy's. <laughs> He'll talk. All right. He better talk. He's got the voice of a goddamn angel. What? Hey. Fingers crossed he's still saying. Man, I can hear you. What the f is that? He's just excited about you telling us. No. What does being single have to do with anything, huh? Hey. hey. First off, watch your language. What? Second, story time is going to help with your sentence. Maybe they even get you less time. That looks really funny. <laughs> yes, it's it's pretty good. Yeah. I mean, yeah. performances in there are just really good. Directing is awesome. Really, all I was doing on set was nothing. <laughs> was taking behind the scenes, but you know. Well, you did all the work beforehand. Well, it was a pre-production. I mean, executive it, producer. My, the most enjoyable thing for me was just watching everyone work together, play together. Yeah. You know, just create something amazing because. As a producer, that's my greatest joy from producing is setting up the pieces for them to go and then create something awesome. And so. do you guys plan on submitting it to film festivals? And we do. There's one down in LA. Um, 
forget the name there's of it. There's a lot in LA. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's, only there's only one film festival in LA. Film festival we want, no. Um, um, yeah, we're that we're Lindsay's a part of. Yeah. It's kind of a, it's, it's expensive, first of all, to submit yeah. to film festivals. Yeah. So we're really kind of thinking about the strategy involved <laughs> and which ones it's going to be most appropriate for. So we're still kind of in the works on our festival strategy, but mm -hmm. there are plans to submit it. So, yeah. Yes. Yeah. But it was great. I mean, I, on the set, I was the set mom, you know, I brought all the food and <laughs> took care of everybody. It was, it was a fun new role that I've never done. But again, I was just really happy. I mean, I'm trained as an actor, so uh, that's usually what I do on set. But I mean, to be involved with crew and help out in any way I could was, it was just a joy to me, actually. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's, it's good to, to learn all the different roles yeah. of, of filmmaking because then if you are an actor on a film and someone's doing something, you're like, oh, I know what you're doing because yeah. I did that role before, you know. Totally. You, you understand Absolutely. what they have to go through as That's well. true. And I would also say a quick note on that to professionals living in the Bay Area. I think wearing many hats mm -hmm. is so imperative to becoming full-time yes. with what you want to do. I mean, actor, model, producer, director, casting director, associate PA. producer, PA. Just because, you know, we... There's not as many jobs yet. I mean, we're building we're building that infrastructure, but you know, until that time comes, you've yeah. you've got to be versatile in what you can do. I, I would say not only that, but it's also networking. You have to be proactive in creating connections and relationships mm -hmm. with people because, I mean, as everyone always says, and everything you ever hear, it's not what you know; it's who you know, mm -hmm. and that's even more true, especially in the Bay Area, because of the, the smaller uh, scene and you know the the smaller amount of resources available. You have to be able to know more people to be full time in this industry right. out here yeah. and create and collaborate. And if yeah. you don't know how to do something, you have to learn it. You know, you research it. There's Google, and it's easier than ever to actually learn how to, you know, get yourself on set, meet people, and make those connections. Yeah, because I think deep down, people really want to support you, whoever you are. You know, they want to learn about you. They want to hear what you do, and if they can provide help. I think more often than not, especially in the Bay Area, people people want to do that, and you know, carry you through to whatever your dreams are. And so, exactly, the more people you know, the better chances of getting what you really want, and you know, and making and your career and, flourish. Yeah. And don't be afraid to ask. There's always yeah. yeah, a lot of people ask to help out, or a lot of people ask to do something, and I'm always open yeah. to open to that because I started in the exact same way. I was mostly acting, and then uh, I asked uh, an advertising agency if I could help as a PA with them. Mm -hmm. And they said yes, and I got paid 50 bucks a day. I was juiced and excited. You know, I was helping out now with a professional company, getting my foot in the door. Mm -hmm. And that led to, you know, one thing after another. But, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I mean, speaking about wearing multiple hats, both of you guys wear multiple hats. Like, Cameron, you do, do producing, you're a musician, you do acting. Um, mm -hmm. Like, what... What's your favorite role that you like to do? Because all of us have like our favorite yeah. thing that we like to do. But out of all of those, <clears throat> out of all those things you you do, what's what strikes you the most that you want to strive towards? That's always the the most difficult question. Is how do you know how do you narrow it down and find your focus? Because as you continue to, to uh, move forward in your career, and if you have multiple things that you're doing, there's always going to be a point when you're going to have to put more. Of your, you know, more allocate more of your energy and time into one thing or the other. But mm -hmm. um, I love music. I've always played. I've been playing music for 16 years, and I'm a drummer. And so for me, that's my my kind of my release. And I love just creating music with my bandmates and other in, uh, musicians, and just jamming and kind of feeling the energy that comes from that. But um, my greatest passion right now is producing and helping other people see their potential and creating projects with other people who have great ideas. So that, that nice. is just really fulfilling right now. Directing, I love to do that when I get the opportunities. I don't mm -hmm. get to do that as much. But, yeah. And then consistently ongoing is acting. I, I'm, my agents just send me out all the time. And so uh, I do enjoy that, but producer is the hat I like yeah. the best. Great, and you recently put together a producer reel. Yes. Is that correct? Oh, yeah. Yes, yeah. yeah, so let's see that.
Bravo, bravo, nice. wonderful. So yeah, so a lot of that was created um, <clears throat> with different creative agencies out here, Glass and Marker, mm -hmm. uh, Boca. There was uh, some stuff independently that I produced and wrote and directed. And so it was kind of a mixture of a little bit of everything I've been up to out here in the last year and a half. So And it's yeah. so nice to see friends that you've yeah, worked and with. Yeah, all the actors know. in there are you know, just my friends. And so it's just it's fun to cast your friends in projects when you know you get the the assignment and the budget and then you kind of uh, all right let's see you know right the role there's a breakdown who do i know that fits that and so yeah. being at, you know having coffee and catch up as this huge entire network is just right. really you know it simplifies the process for me too yeah. when I, when I need, to, need to go out and find people because there's just this uh you know this collection of top talent so, yeah. yeah it's really my belief too that you know when you are working with friends that are professionals, you know, colleagues, you're gonna get better performances, you know? They trust you, they trust your judgment, they trust your guidance, you have a mutual connection. You, you're gonna get better work, I think. And, and so the more that people know each other, the more networking that happens, the more that we can all know each other. It doesn't mean we have to be best friends, but we all know each other. You're just gonna, you're just gonna have better performances, yeah. Yeah, better respect than just, you know, hiring someone you don't really know and you never mm -hmm. worked with before. I mean, that's what networking is all about, right, with this industry mm -hmm. is is getting that group of people that you can collaborate with and network with. And that's yeah. what you guys are doing. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I mean, it's finding your, you know, you want to work with everybody, but you also want to work with the people that you really enjoy working with mm -hmm. the most. Mm -hmm. And you build trust over time. You build the kind of, you know, people's tendencies, you know, what people have as capabilities, what their weaknesses are. So, you can better adapt while you're on set to the different changing uh, yeah. circumstances that happen over the course of yeah. the production uh, because things can change really quickly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. And if you can feel comfortable on set again with people that you know and you're friendly with, it allows, you know, as an actor for you to be more vulnerable mm -hmm. and to share more and give more of yourself to the performance because you know that everyone has your back. Yeah, because it's not just it's not just hiring on just random people and working with random actors. Yeah. You actually become like a little family. Mm -hmm. yeah. of, of people, sure. you know, you guys tribe. help each other and support each other and respect each other. And yeah. that's, that's what's great about this industry in the Bay Area is that we all treat each other like like family. Yeah. And that's, that's yeah. what I love. You know, we all yeah. are, are loving and passionate about what we do. Yeah. Yeah, so. I, I totally agree. I've, you know, I've been down to L.A. a few times. I haven't spent too much time down there. I do enjoy going down and seeing friends and mm -hmm. getting involved in projects when I can, but... There's just this sense of community here in the Bay Area that I haven't experienced anywhere else. And yeah. it, I think it's not even just in our, you know, the entertainment scene, but it goes out beyond that. Uh, and people out here just seem to be more connected and just more understanding of each other. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, in, yeah. In my experience. Yeah. I mean, I haven't really lived in New York. I mean, I lived in, lived in New York, lived in D.C., um, never, in L never in L.A. yet, but living here has just been amazing. I mean... And I, you know, I was reading an article the other day, and they're saying, like, you know, everybody who comes to San Francisco is always open to new experiences. That's the thing too. It's like, you know, a new bar is opening, a new, a new startup's happening here, a new, you know, a new cool trail in the park is there, as opposed to, you know, on the East Coast, you know, living in New York or Boston, it's like, oh, we're, out, we're you know, going to the old bar down the street. You know, that's the old kind of. That's the place, that's what we know is comfortable, that's what we're going to do, and you're not going to change that. You know, that's kind of the foundation, it's the structure. But out here, it's just like everyone is so excited about new ideas and new opportunities that it really helps, you know, small companies turn into larger companies because they're really finding that there's so much open-mindedness and yeah. people are being willing to be creative and take a chance, really, too. You know, take a chance on something new that they don't know. It's kind of like the startup culture with tech. It's kind of like... It's finding its way into the mix of everything, you know, being out here in Silicon Valley now, Silicon City now, Silicon Bay, it kind of has evolved to a point where these ideas and the what's valued out here is your mind and your creativity and what can you right. think of and who has the next big idea. Mm -hmm. um, right. But I feel like that also provides an opportunity for a better mixing of tech and film. And, you know, hopefully down the line we can create more opportunities for people who are interested in film who are in tech to make a movie or help fund a film or yeah. a TV series or something where they know that what they're doing is helping create something out here so that people 
you know, actors and directors and producers can make a living to do what they love out here mm -hmm. and create entertainment for the people who live out here and beyond. Yeah, and that's interesting because, you know, the tech jobs I've worked out here, it's always been the sense of collaboration as well. So it's interesting to see how that's kind of spilling over into all the other industries here that, you know, everyone can collaborate if, you know, the, the tech moguls are collaborating and working and sharing ideas and in a sense, everyone's, I mean, they're not, but everyone's on the same level you know, in terms of like information and knowledge, mm -hmm. it's like applying that to the entertainment scene can create some really cool things. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. I agree. Yeah. Well, yeah. Taylor, you do acting, modeling, oh, yeah. you're getting into TV hosting. Oh, yes. Um, what, what do you enjoy the most? Out of you know, oh, great question. I mean, so many hats. Yeah, I'd have to say um, it's, it's definitely a mix between acting and hosting. I... And the reason is I, I just love, I love promotions. Mm -hmm. I love promoting people. I love promoting ideas. And, um, but acting, like, you know, Cameron's Escape is through drums with his band. You know, me, it's more with acting, I think. You know, to really get into a character and really kind of explore a new side of myself, for sure. I mean, that's always refreshing and alleviating. Um, so definitely between acting and hosting, uh, it, it's hard to say, and then hosting is so great because I just I love to talk to people and kind of showcase what they do as well, yeah. you know. So um, yeah. yeah, recently me and Taylor did. Um, oh yes, yeah. we did. Uh, what was did it we World do? Comic Con? Yeah, in San Jose. And that was we great. Had a man. really good time yeah. hosting together. Lou Ferrigno, Brett Dalton. <laughs> and that should be on our station pretty soon. That was our first <laughs> hosting. That was our first hosting. Okay, yeah, first of many. It's yes. Exciting. <laughs> yeah, I saw the sneak yeah. peek. They looked great. <laughs> oh, thank you. Yeah, I had a big Batman t-shirt on. And yeah, I was Superman. Su Superman. I had a little funny skit in the beginning. You have to watch it. You have to go home and watch yeah. it for sure. It's really good. Now, yeah. you brought in your, your acting demo reel for us, right? I Are did, yeah. Should we watch awesome. it? Okay. Yeah, let's watch it. Dare we? All right. Hit that jack jack. Put it in pocket till I get back. I go crazy. I, I literally go crazy. You're going crazy right I'm, now. I'm going crazy We're right trying to now. shoot this promo, promo video. video. Are you kidding me? Thundermaker, what's wrong? This Credit Karma website says I can get a credit score for free. Thundermaker's no fool! Thundermaker, it's cool. Credit Karma is really free. You don't even need to enter your credit card. I just got a free credit score! <laughs> this makes me feel like Thundermaker! Then he said, give me your lunch money, or they'd all be there waiting for me after school. That must have been so difficult. So difficult. Is she gonna be here for every session? Ooh, Annie, you know, she's an understudy. You, you can completely ignore her. Anyway, I can't help replaying that memory. It's killing me. Hi, Mom. Yes, I'm coming to dinner. Yeah, I'll bring my laundry. According to Synaptics, their new proximity technology allows the touchscreen to track my finger or hand movements even when I'm not touching the screen. Well, that's great. I mean, I'll have instant access to my camera, my music, my text messaging. <laughs> okay, Taylor. Yeah. So as you can see, it's a lot of a lot of commercial acting. Um, you know, that's the biggest thing here in the Bay. But I really, like, I'll be honest, I genuinely love doing commercial acting. Again, it's it's that sense of you know you're helping a business thrive. You know, you're sort of the face of the company, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and. I don't know. There's just there's just a sense of privilege in that. I mean, obviously, it's not like you know, some sort of Shakespearean piece or something from Artaud or something. But it's definitely it's it definitely just allows you to um, let the company shine, let yourself shine, and you get paid pretty well too. So it's yeah. And did you find it was great. hard to adapt um, going from theater to to film? Did you? Find so the, that I think that's difficult? another reason why. I really like uh, commercial and film acting because there's that challenge, right? Mm -hmm. like, I'm naturally a very big person. I love to be very theatrical and spread my arms and do this, that, and the other. But in film, it's all, you know, you got to kind of keep it contained. I mean, there's some shots in films where you can really just, just be very natural. But um, I think a lot of the training for me has been kind of less is more, you know, and kind of bring that energy down and hone that energy. So it's a great challenge and skill, but I'm still honing. And... Um, but I think I, I much more now prefer to do film than theater um, just because of that and just because of, and also just because of the distribution, right? I mean, mm -hmm. it's, 
if you will, it's a less selfish art. You know what I mean? Because you're filming something and then it can be broadcast to hundreds of thousands, millions of people. Theater is a very in the moment. It's still very beautiful, but it's like in the moment, you're in a contained space, very certain energy. Um, but then film, it's just like, here, have more, have more, have more to everybody, you know, over and repeat and repeat. And, um, and because of that philosophy, I really like film, I'd say. <laughs> Cool. Yeah, yeah. Can't wait and to do more of it. What has been your favorite film project you've done so far? Oh my god, my favorite one. God, what would I say? Um, oh, I would say uh, my recent film with Brett Marty. It's called Youth. Beautiful short film about um, it's sort of this. I guess I would say dystopia. This future world. It's it's based in San Francisco. Mm-hmm. About this. Um, the society that has this thing called Renewed You, and um, basically old people can exchange their old bodies uh, for younger bodies. So it's the same soul, the same memories, the same thoughts, but it's like this recycling of bodies. And so, you know, the, you know, poor people have these sort of older bodies because they can't trade them in. So there's this cool kind of societal rift with. Um, the haves and the have-nots kind of thing, and it creates this whole cool political structure in this whole world. And so I play Dr. Vern, this very, like, you know, uptight, serious doctor. Um, you know, young doctor. Very uptight and serious? Yeah, very uptight and serious. I have the audition for this. I'm going to get this. No worries. I'm <laughs> Congrats, and they, thanks, buddy. No jealousy there. No jealousy. Not at all. I think mean, for the fifth time, Andy Strong, thank you for, oh, yeah, right. for referring me to this audition. And they had me do a full body spray tan. Now that was new. I never had that done before. Um, but they only needed my face and my hands. I looked really dark. I wish I could, we could show a clip. That looks really funny. Um, and, uh, and so the scene was with George McGuire, the great who's a San Francisco actor, uh, been here for, oh gosh, uh, many, many years, completely professional, awesome guy, Mm -hmm. and did the scene with him, and he was the older gentleman who is trying to have his body transplanted into a a younger body, um, and there's a complication. So his wife, the week before, just had the operation, and now he's coming in for his sort of review before the operation, and I kind of tell him the bad news, that he can't do it because of some sort of genetic problem he's having. And so there's the whole like, but I have to have, you know what I mean? And it's very intense and very dramatic and very emotional. Um, but beautifully shot, beautifully directed, scripted. Um, just a really, I think it's about a 30 minute film. Um, but who knows what they'll do with it. If they'll, I'm sure they'll submit it to many, many festivals. Yeah. and. Maybe make it into a feature because I think they should. I mean, it's got so much detail and there's so much specificity and room for it to grow that I would, I think, well, love they to see come it. Coffee and ketchup and collaborate yes. with people. Yes, absolutely. To make it come on, guys, we're here every Thursday morning. Piano fight, little yeah. plug. <laughs> Now, yeah. what's, what's new for you guys? Like, what's coming up? In, in oh my gosh, so much. What do you guys personally? What do we start with? Yeah. Um, Man. Go for uh, it. What's Any personal projects coming up for you, Ben? Any personal projects? Uh, yeah, I'm doing a, uh, a video with a friend who has a daughter with type 1 oh, diabetes, yeah. and I'm going to be shooting a video uh, for her to help uh, raise awareness and some maybe some fundraising for a walk that she's doing in Walnut Creek next month. Oh, that's um, nice. So that's a personal project that I'm, I like to... You know, it's, it, the more you go in your career, it's harder and harder to find time to do things where you just do it because you are passionate about it because mm-hmm. you know as the bills start to pile up and all these things that happen you know you gotta get you gotta find the money yeah. um, but I still always try to make time for things that are impactful and have a place in society and try to w- raise awareness for things like I'm always interested in mental health issues um, I come from a background of psychology and I worked with kids for three years in different mental health settings and so um, I'm always seeking opportunities where I can help other lift up other people um, but that, and then we just released our, or we just finished recording our EP with our band. We just oh, had yeah. our first single release party last week. Nice. And we've got more shows coming up soon. So focusing on that and just really everything we're doing with Coffee and Ketchup. Yeah. Um, I was the mascot at their show. He it was, was fun. Was I, had, I was wearing a, yeah. like a, a rabbit head, I think. Rabbit head? Rabbit head. You were running around. At one point, you weren't wearing a shirt. And you were, <laughs> well, that, maybe, maybe that's, we'll bring that's you, not for that. Maybe we'll bring him back. <laughs> Yeah, uh, someone, someone <laughs> told Andy, uh, they came up to me and said, I don't know what I just saw, 
Mm -hmm. But it was awesome. Really fun. <laughs> if you ever need a you know promotional model for your band or TV show, I'm I'm the guy. You can hire me. A <laughs> plug. Um, yeah, I would yeah. say for me, like uh, coffee and ketchup is becoming almost an 80 hour a week job. Mm -hmm. That uh, you know, and, and I'm trying to kind of transition all my work into coffee and ketchup because you know we're making this a career. We're making this a new opportunity for the entire Bay Area. And you know, if Cameron and I are to do that, it requires a lot of energy, which we have because everybody's giving it back to us. But we've got to stay focused. You know, we got to be in the office. We got to be there 8 a.m. every day and just burn oh. it out until like six. You're yeah. working on. We're we're working on Taylor TV. That's the next big thing. Oh my right? gosh! Yes. Of course. I, I, I think that was sort of part of. That was a segue into that. That, that was like a segue. <laughs> you, you you beat me to it. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Taylor TV, yes, coming to your home television set next month, October. Well, we're still deciding the launch date, but definitely sometime next uh, next month, we're creating this new show catered toward uh, Bay Area entertainment scene. So we're going to be showcasing music videos, short films, clips of features, uh, interview segments out in the field at parties, mixers, things like that, and, um, you know, Taylor to your needs here in the Bay Area by Taylor, the man himself. <laughs> and uh, we'll be right here in this beautiful studio. And uh, yeah, it's going to be so exciting. We have about, gosh, 30 people interested. We're doing interviews next week. Um, so if you see this in time and you want to get scheduled for an interview, contact me. We'll get you, we'll get you locked up. Um, because we need a lot of people, you know, a lot of hands on deck here. It's going to be a huge production. And Cameron here is executive producer, so he's going to be doing a lot of production coordination and mm -hmm. kind of getting everybody in their place. I'll be more on sort of the talent side, um, going over scripts and going over skits. Um, but again, really just trying to build the Bay Area up, you know, build the scene up here. You know, I don't think that, you know, we don't have like a Jimmy Fallon or Jimmy Kimmel type of show here yet. And, you know, it can be this new show that just kind of showcases our local celebrities. And we have fun with them, because why not? I mean, who says we can't do that? Yeah. Um, so we're here to do that. We're here to make a statement and bring everybody who wants to be a part of it. So Taylor TV, it's so exciting. It's just, it consumes like everything. <laughs> you know, and just like writing I'm, episodes. I'm excited for it. I think yeah. it's a great idea. Yeah, yeah. I'm definitely excited for it. We're excited for it here at the studio to help you out okay. with it. Awesome. Um, yeah, it's awesome. going to be a great adventure. Yeah. We can co-host shows together. We can go to events. Every time there's a film festival, you know, we can go out there. and oh, Endless opportunities, really. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to be a lot so, of fun. So there's that. And then, yeah, and then Cocktails and Ketchup coming up December 1st. Um, and then you want to talk about Fruit Flies a little bit? Yeah. Your new web series? Um, so we've got a new web series coming out. Well, in development right now. Mm -hmm. We're working with uh, Huang Li who is a good friend of ours and directed Buddy Salter, and uh, the writer Andrea Spensos, who is an actor out here in the Bay Area. And um, we've been working with those two and helping kind of just facilitate the discussion, facilitate the, uh, the energy, and we've got the first season planned out. Um, the treatments are pretty much finished, and in fact, we're going to have a phone call with Kwong after we get done with the interview here. And talk about it, and so. Oh, we are. Um, okay. Oh, cool. We are. <laughs> oh, good. Yeah, I get it. I got to read my emails. I didn't give the memos. I get it. Uh, yeah. But see, so much is going on. I just have to keep. Yeah. So we're planning on <laughs> we're planning on shooting that uh, next month, and it's a story about uh, two men. One's a you know pickup artist. The other guy is a heartbroken guy who just got out of a relationship, and they're sick of all the tenders and OK Cupids and uh, online dating, <laughs> and they can't find you know girls the traditional way. So they, they get the bright idea to go. And uh, try to hit on girls who like to hang out with gay men, which are known as fruit flies. And so it's the act of uh, fruit flying. You go to these bars, and you know the women are a little bit more vulnerable because there's not as many men hitting on them because they're gay. And and so that's the whole idea, right? Yeah, yeah. That's kind of the gist of it. And so we're working out the first season, uh, planning ahead a little bit, and uh, probably just going to shoot uh, in the next month or two. Still figuring once we get the. Script completed. We'll mm -hmm. go into production mode. So yeah, hopefully we'll have a screening by our December first party. So. Yeah, it's really cool because it's going to follow these two characters who kind of represent a little bit of the alpha omega spectrum of, if I may say so, sexuality. You know, and what is your orientation, and sort of exploring that more and seeing where people fall in that spectrum and 
kind of exploring that line, because I feel like there's such a boundary sometimes. You're either you know this way or you're that way. You're Republican, you're Democrat, you're gay, you're straight, you know, this, that. But it'd be interesting to get right in that gray matter, you know, and really kind of explore the explore that um, um, the way that it is through these two characters. Yeah. yeah. So a lot's going on. Wow. And then every Thursday morning, we have pretty much special guests now. Every single week until almost November, I would say now. I mean, right? yeah, it's, it's booked, booked out in the calendar. We're getting now people who are approaching us to be. Usually, it's we're, yeah. we go out and, and find the guests, and mm -hmm. we kind of started doing this after. So the the way the group started was just kind of discussion, and we would have kind of smaller groups of as we grew. You know, one person at the first one with three right. people, so we just yeah, talked about people. what we were doing that day. Uh, the next one was six people, so we just decided to come up with the topic and start talking. And so as it grew. Um, we'd bring in guests and because mm -hmm. we wanted to hear from other people who have more knowledge than us and learn from those people. And now it's really become its own thing where, um, you know, this past week uh, we had Michelle McCalla, who's yeah. the president of Marla Dell Talent uh, Asking the Agency. To, she yeah. came in and gave a great uh, discussion about diversity in casting and finding opportunities and creating your own opportunities, you know, if they don't exist. And... Um, this right. next week we have YouTube star Karen Chang coming in. Mm -hmm. She's going to be talking about viral videos and how to effectively push a video out to try to get it to get lots of views and mm -hmm. how to create those in the content. Yeah. Film Patels the week after that, who's a collective group of female directors. And they started in New York City under the guidance of uh, our founder, Leah Meyerhoff, who just finished um, her film, I Believe in Unicorns. And it's been getting tons of oh, press yeah. reviews. She was actually uh -huh. our guest a couple months ago. And so now have a panel discussion with five female directors and talk about what opportunities exist for women in filmmaking and how support in that realm helps uh, each other out and stuff. It's just really cool to see so many people and just meet so many people. Oh, know, yeah, absolutely. And, I mean, people have such good questions and they're really engaged and mm -hmm. I just... I learn something every time. I oh, yeah, I learn so much. And it's exciting to see what it's going to lead to, you know. I mean, it's already st <clears throat> starting this momentum and... Oh, I just yeah, get so chills. what are you guys' uh, future, you know, goals and aspirations for Coffee and Catch Up? Do you think it's going to be more than just, you know, catching up and, and having speakers? Do you think it's going to turn into a festival one of these so, days? Like, well, at the core, it's always going to be, I think what we started it as was this hub, mm -hmm. kind of somewhere that you can go, you know you're going to see people you know, you know you're going to see your friends in the industry, and you can sit down, and whether it's a cup of coffee or a cocktail, you know, you can have a great time mm -hmm. but expanding out we've you know me and Taylor both are always going to be doing things individually but as a whole uh, within the the entertainment scene out in the Bay Area I see a lot of potential for collectively just more companies popping up more production houses more entertainment companies more people kind of getting into their career mm -hmm. and really helping facilitate this scene to become something bigger than it is now and mm -hmm. maybe more shows on Chabot TV and you know like right. I feel like yeah, I mean, I see it as basically uh, down the line, every single actor in San Francisco will know and not only know about, but use the resources of coffee and ketchup. Because as you said, it's it's a it's a resource hub. Yeah. Um, people come, they learn new tricks of their trade, you know, and they and they meet new faces. And if we can get it to a point where all fifteen thousand actors in San Francisco know about coffee and ketchup and Want more of it and and want to be more a part of it, then 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 thumbs up. You know that's the goals met. And then and then the question from there is, you know, is there another city? You know, because our sister group, Balanced Breakfast, they have about six or seven, you know, Balanced Breakfasts all over the United States, and that's just their format. You know, we're trying to kind of <clears throat> it's, it's working really great, but we're trying to kind of condense the energy here and get it as hot and as strong as you can before you know. Other cities knock on our door saying, you know, we love your format, we love what you're doing, we want to have one in Atlanta or mm -hmm. Chicago or Seattle, you know. But just to really grow it as strong as it can be in San Francisco, honestly, to a point where, you know, you think of entertainment in the Bay Area, you think of coffee and ketchup, you think of like those two things integrated, merged, where people can come and learn, but also a place where it's just simultaneously very open and inviting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, yeah. if you have a project <clears throat> and you need help, you can go to Coffee and Catch Up. You can find people who can help you. Right. Um, and then you, the more people you get to know, obviously, the more people you have in your 
you know, your phone and you just call people yeah. up eventually at the point you don't need to go out and post on the internet and go out and try to find people because you've got all the you need. And that's a great point because we now have these things uh, in the mornings before the meetup called pitches, you know, pitch and plugs. Mm -hmm. So people can come, they can pitch their project to the whole group. Oh, nice. You know, nice. it's like, I got this project, I need two PAs, uh, you know, a director and some duct tape, you know, <laughs> who, who can help us? Raise your hand. And raise your hand, yeah, yeah. It's just like, it's a cool forum. It's like back in the ancient Roman times and they had forums, you know? This is a form to kind of call out to people and say, this is what I need, rather than it being online and very vague and sketchy. I mean, that yeah, was kind of... I mean, that's the whole underlying purpose. Of that's the underlying purpose. Started, was, that goes back to why we started. Yeah, it goes back to so much of a fragmented so, kind yeah. of system set up right here that in the Bay Area, at least, you know, there's groups with thousands of people in them. They say they're the Bay Area actors and this and that, but you post something and you have one like or no one even gets back to you or you have a serious question and you can't find the answer to it. Yeah. And we felt that was kind of a disconnect from the way it is in real life. You know, uh, we obviously understand that the, you know, our online, even our online image is a little bit different than who we are as a person. So when you get to meet people in person, there's really this connection that you can't fake. And there's something mm -hmm. real about meeting somebody in the flesh that you get to develop your own relationship with them and see who they are and you know feel the the different facets of their voice and the energy when they speak to you. Yeah. And so I mean, starting coffee and ketchup was taking that premise of we want to have real in-person interactions rather than just relying on an online resource because there's no real community in the online world unless you know the people who are there. And, right, uh, yeah. I mean, there's, If there's, you can't go out and yeah. you know, go to the park with five of your friends because you really don't know them and then no one's going to show up, that's not a real community because you're in the real world disconnected. Right. So it's really about connecting people in the flesh to create yeah. and harbor those real relationships and then the way we view, you know, Facebook and all these different online resources is in addition mm -hmm. to yeah. that. It becomes a very valuable resource. Which really enhances those social yeah. media tools then because yeah. then now you have context and you know these people and then you further the dialogue when you can't, you know, like this. Like yes. you can Facebook message or something. Yeah, it's, it's, uh. it's a totally different um, feeling when you meet somebody online versus you're meeting them in person. Oh, yeah. I mean, uh, yeah. And, something about a handshake, right? It's just yeah, like you feel are, flash, you feel the other person, you have, yeah. you measure how hard they squeeze your hand. You know, you can see a lot there's of just a lot of other language. cues that, yeah. sh that I feel like <clears throat> online there's only one, maybe two cues. Mm -hmm. <laughs> in the flesh, there's like, yeah, you know, <laughs> a poke and a hey, what's going on? And uh, and then meeting someone in person, there's like 20 different keys yeah. going on, you know what I mean? And especially actors, they can really pick up on that stuff. So um, th that, that was definitely one of the reasons we started. We were part of so many online acting groups, and they're just... There's no context. Really yeah, and then, and then you just you get confused and you get frustrated going on every single site trying to figure out, mm -hmm. like, are these people good to work with? You know, yeah. you don't know yeah. until you get on set with them. And um, yeah. that's why I love what you guys are doing for Coffee and Ketchup because you are bringing the film community together and you're saying, let's be a family and let's respect each other and let's socialize yeah. with each other and work with each other and make this community just – a beautiful place to work mm -hmm. yeah. um, and I think it's wonderful that you guys are doing this and for people that have never heard of coffee and ketchup like where can they go to get your guys information to figure out like you know what events are going on sure so you can go to coffee and ketchup dot com mm -hmm. uh, that is c-o-f-f-e-e-a-n-d-c-a-t-c-h-u-p dot <laughs> com <coughs> excuse me tickle my throat and you can also go on our Facebook uh, page just search coffee space and space ketchup. Um, we also have a private Facebook group. If you're in the industry, mm -hmm. you can go and you know we're pretty open to inviting everybody into that. Mm -hmm. um, unless you got a fake profile and you're from Malaysia, um, <laughs> please don't join our area, group. But, um, <laughs> and their Twitter handle is at coffee ketchup. Mm -hmm. And then I think we have an uh, we have a meetup page as well. You can meet us on. Um, <laughs> What else? Yeah. Instagram? Instagram, I mean, we don't really there's so it. much to keep we up should. with these days. It's yeah. just like if you have 20 of the social media apps, there's no way you can keep, you know, I'll be on my phone all day long <laughs> posting like the same I picture. know, there's yeah, there's only things. so much. But we focus most heavily through the website and then Facebook is kind of our yeah. and Twitter as well. So these would be the best ones to find us at. Um, and obviously find us in the flesh every Thursday morning, right. 8 to 10 a.m., Piano Fight, 144 Taylor Street, San Francisco, 94102, be there, be there, be there, be there, literally every single Thursday, it's rolling. Um, yeah, doors open at 8, guest starts at 9, we go till 10, mix and mingle till about 10, 30, 11, and yeah. 
get your day started on a good note. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Well, great. Thank you guys so much for taking the time and talking with me today. I'm super excited to see where coffee and catch up leads. And I'm just, I'm very, very happy that the two of you are just bringing this community together. And it's, it's, it's exciting. And it's well, Connie, wonderful. we just really wanted to say thank you for yeah. bringing us on today, honestly, and, and allowing us to showcase what we've been working on. Um, by you showcasing us. Yeah, well, <laughs> so, that's what this yeah, that's, that's the whole about, idea. You know, it's like you know, this collaborative. Showcase yeah. The Bay Area so. talent here because, you know, right. I've been doing this for years and I want right. to showcase the people that I enjoy. And how did we all meet? Was it an audition? I Let's get back to our roots. I think it was Nancy. It all starts at Nancy Hayes, right? It all starts at Nancy Hayes. <laughs> <laughs> it, goes, it goes from there. All right. Some yeah. coffee and caught up. Well, thanks, guys. Yeah. I hope so much to have fun. you guys back on my show pretty soon. Absolutely. Absolutely. And stay tuned for Taylor TV coming yeah, up soon. Stay Um, he's rolling. Great! This is our promo video. I'm Taylor. And I'm Cameron. And together we founded Coffee and Ketchup. Like this, right? No, Cameron, not that ketchup. Like, the act of catching up. You know, we are an in-person networking and collaboration group of professional actors and filmmakers in the Bay Area. And we meet every Friday morning at Piano Fight, which is San Francisco's newest uh, entertainment venue. It's got two theater stages, bar, restaurant, cabaret stage. It's amazing. Amazing. Yeah. You don't want to miss out. I mean, we have phenomenal guest speakers, interactive discussions, hands-on workshops, and by the way, phenomenal Bedfellows coffee. Woo! That is the real deal. It is so good. Yeah. Oh my so, god. I have like 10 cups of meeting. <laughs> I go crazy. I, I literally go crazy. You're going crazy right I'm, now. I'm going crazy We're right trying to now. shoot this promo, promo video. video. Dude. With some... Pour, pour me more. <laughs> pour me some more. more. Okay. Thanks, anyway. guys. We'll see you this Friday.